And we're going to talk about water weight. What is it? Why does it happen? And how do you get rid of it? So a lot of us um, have eaten a lot more food, a lot different kind of food, maybe that are stressed. There's all sorts of reasons right now where, why a lot of us are probably holding on to some extra water weight. So you may have noticed some weight on the scale. You may have even heard me don't get on the, say, say, don't get on the scale the day after Thanksgiving. You're just, you're just gonna freak yourself out. It's just water weight. So what does that even mean? Um, and um, why does it happen? So first I wanna demonstrate um, it, this would be better if I had a sponge, but I'm not at home. Um, but I want to demonstrate to you what it means when the scale says, okay, let's say you weighed 150 pounds on Wednesday, and then Thanksgiving happened, and then on Friday, you silly thing, got back on the scale, and the, the scale is up like four pounds. Like, how did you gain four pounds in two days? Well, it's totally possible with water weight, but let me show you what it means when I say it's just water weight. Okay, this is a paper towel, okay? So this is like half of a pa paper towel. This weighs whatever this weighs, right? If I take this and I get it wet, okay? If I put this on the scale, it would weigh more than it did a moment ago when it was totally dry, right? But the paper towel itself still weighs the same. It just also is holding all this extra water. So that's what happens to our bodies, right? So after a few days, things going back to normal, right? I'm, never gonna, I'm not going to be able to get this completely dry. But after a few days of things being completely normal, doing some things I'll talk about towards the end of the live, you're back to your normal weight because your body weight didn't actually change. It was just holding on to more water. So that concludes the the science fair portion of the uh, of the of the night here. So what does it mean to hold water weight? Typically, it means that so it's the, it's fluids in your body that don't get processed or that didn't get processed by your kidneys, either because there's there's too much of it, um, your body's too stressed, um, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to go over some reasons why you would hold more water. But basically, it's just water that it's there that normally would have got get got flushed out by your kidneys and it just hasn't gotten flushed out yet okay so some reasons for retaining water number one is going to be sodium now sodium is not bad we need salt in our diet it is important to have salt uh, the standard american diet does have too much salt only because the standard American diet has too much heavily processed foods okay so if you eat most of your bag out of packages and um, wrappers, you're going to have a diet that is high in sodium, and that's probably going to be too much sodium. However, if you're eating mostly whole foods, you actually want to salt your food because hopefully you're also drinking a lot of water and you need to have that salt. But what happens is the, the water and the salt bind together, just like the water bound to, um, you know, the tissues of this paper towel here. Um, and, uh, uh, help the the sodium actually helps to carry water throughout your body and keep it in your body so in endurance sports for example like i'm i've run three marathons i've done a whole bunch of triathlons we actually use salt um to our advantage so if you ever get that like waterlogged feeling where you like you drink too much water and you just feel like full and heavy of water so that can happen if it's really hot um, or you're or you're sweating a lot like in an endurance event if you're just drinking a bunch of straight water without having any sodium um, in that water or any other electrolytes in that water it's just going to sit there kind of in your stomach and give you that waterlogged feeling and then it's not actually going to circulate through your body like you need it to um, and they'll start to get like muscle cramps and and, um, and swelling and stuff in your fingers um, because you don't have enough salt so we will actually take salt capsules um, endurance athletes will, will carry salt capsules on them. If you've needed them and didn't have them, didn't know about them before. I mean, I've like like saved people in the middle of um, uh, races or uh, cycling events and things like that by giving them salt for the first time. And it's like a miracle when you really need it and all of a sudden you get it. Um, uh, so once you have that salt in you, it helps to actually circulate that fluid throughout your body to your muscles that are working really hard in, in that case. So it's not a bad thing that salt holds water, um, holds water in our body. 
But if you have more salt than you normally have, that can cause an increase in that, in that water weight. Um, carbohydrates do something similar. Carbohydrates, when they're not used kind of immediately in your body for energy, are stored in our muscle cells as glycogen. So glycogen is the stored form of glucose, sugar. And so what happens is actually similar to, if you missed the beginning, I, we did a really fun little science experiment in the beginning. So imagine this is the, these, all these little um, tiny little bits here in this paper towel are your muscle cells, okay? And if I had to intake a bunch of carbohydrates and now my body is going to, it's called filling up its glycogen stores. Well, for every gram of carbohydrates you consume, your body holds on to two to three grams of water. So it's like, if this is my muscle and I have some carbohydrates and now my muscle gets full of water. And so my muscle, if someone who's, someone who's really lean, you can tell what it's called a, a dried out look versus a hydrated look. So if someone's really, really lean and um, like vascular, like you can see their veins and everything like that, you can, there's a, there's a very clear difference in like, I'm talking about like really lean bodybuilders in a dried out look. And that means that they have not had a lot of carbohydrates. They have not had a lot of, of, um, of sodium and they're dehydrated basically at this point, their muscle cells don't have a lot of water in them versus one who is well hydrated and, um, and their muscles are full. So they have glucose, they have sodium, they have enough water cir fluid circulating throughout their body and you their muscle will actually have a fuller look to them. Okay. So this is not water weight. That's like, um, it's not like when your legs are swollen, um, and you can like, you get like pitting edema. It's not that kind of swelling. This is actually in the muscle cells themselves. So, um, your period, um, if you're on your period or on birth control, if you've changed up your birth control, if you're on a birth control that maybe just like, isn't like a great kind of, um, formulation for you. Um, those can be reasons why you gain weight. So, you know, ladies, I hope, you know, if you get on the scale kind of, you know, the week before your period, the week of your period, it's not the greatest time to be gauging your weight. Know that it's going to be up. Um, you are carrying extra water weight. There's a lot of inflammation that's happening in your body um, at that time. And so it's just a crappy time to be trying to evaluate your weight, especially if you're like me and it kind of timed itself to just after Thanksgiving, it's a whole, you know what show right now and you don't even want to look at the scale. So um, that's where I am, but I know that it's just water weight and it'll be okay. And in a minute, we're going to talk about some things that we can do to help get rid of some of that excess water weight. Um, stress and inflammation. So if you're doing something, so I, I talked about like sodium and carbohydrates, those are reasons why, why, why your body will hold on to more water. Not necessarily a bad thing. It can be too much. Um, uh, but in particular, if you eat a food that is inflammatory to your body, and this can vary, this could just mean for some people, you know, we're, we're sensitive enough. Um, and well, if you eat mostly heavily processed foods, if you eat a lot of junk food, a lot of sugar, a lot of um, uh, like industrial seed oils, basically if you're eating a lot of fried food um, and uh, fast food and stuff like that, you probably have this like systemic inflammation that you don't actually realize is even there because that's what normal is for you. So that's why a lot of people, when they go from eating kind of like the standard American diet and then they start any other diet, whatever, whatever it is, um, you will see really fast weight loss because of water weight. It's because you're going from this really, really inflammatory situation, and then you're switching it up to something that is less inflammatory. It's probably uh, lower in sodium, depending on what you're doing for a diet. It also might be lower in carbohydrates. So that will cause that water weight to come off. Um, but if you're if you're if you have a food that causes your body some sort of distress on a regular basis, you're going to have this constant level of inflammation happening in your body. So you may never see the scale go down because you keep eating that food. So, okay, so like gluten and gluten and dairy are really good examples of this because a lot of people um, you're not allergic to them. You might not have celiac disease. Um, you might not even be lactose intolerant, but you 
your body doesn't respond well, you can have an intolerance to a food um, that you're not like actually pathologically um, sick from. Um, gluten and dairy are good examples for me. Uh, um, legumes actually are, are another one. If I eat too much legumes, like beans, peas, that kind of stuff, I get bloated like crazy. Uh, I also get like heartburn and all sorts of bad symptoms. So for me, that's a food where like, there's nothing wrong with those foods in general. Those are healthy foods. But for me, they cause a lot of distress and inflammation in my body, which will also lead to water weight gain. So what can, oh, and then in the distress in general too, I want to cover that stress in general. So like, okay, maybe you just hosted Thanksgiving. Maybe it was the first time you ever cooked a turkey or baked a pie and you're just going to be the only dessert there. So you have to get it right. Or just being around your family is really stressful. Stress, the stress hormone cortisol will cause more water weight in your body. Um, I got to see this kind of a cool um, demonstration of this at this conference I went to um, earlier this summer or, or in 2020. Um, but it was a nutrition and fitness guy um, was speaking at this conference that I was at. And he was speaking on day one and he was talking about stress and he's like, so just, just to, just to like, see what would happen. He had weighed himself the day before, um, or the day of the thing. Okay. So let's say he weighed like a hundred based on his size, I don't know, 180 pounds or something like that. He weighed himself the morning of 180 pounds. He does the event. He's speaking in a room in front of like 150 other coaches, um, you know, there's technology things, there's timing, it's all these things happening. And he's like, yeah, this is stressful. He's, you know, you, you can enjoy it and it still be a stress. But he's like, my weight will be up tomorrow based on the stress of today. And he specifically brought his scale so he could demonstrate this. And he got on the scale the next day and he was up eight pounds. He was up eight pounds. Okay. Now, he probably didn't drink that night just based on what we were doing. He probably drank the next night when the conference was over. But um, if you if you had had alcohol, that would have added to that as well. But it was just the stress caused that much. Now, kind of the, the larger of a person you are to begin with, the more body mass you have to retain more water, right? So someone who is five foot nine compared to my five foot one is going to have the capacity to hold more water weight. Therefore, your weight is going to fluctuate more. Um, uh, more than mine would. So for me, um, probably like two to four pounds is is like a, a typical kind of water weight swing that I would see at my size. But if you're bigger than me, you very likely have a bigger uh, kind of window that you'll see uh, weight fluctuations in. Um, this is another reason why a lot of times people will like go on vacation and they'll lose weight on vacation. They're probably drinking on vacation. They're probably eating, you know, more, th you know, different things than they normally eat. So there, there could, could be reasons why they would actually retain water. But a lot of times because they don't have the stress of their regular life and their work and everything, and they're just enjoying themselves and so relaxed, they'll actually lose weight on vacation because of stress. That's how much of an impact it has on our, on our body. So how do we lose water weight? Don't, don't, don't wear sweats and a beanie and go kill yourself on the stair climber or on the treadmill trying to sweat it out. That's not the way to do it. I mean, you could go, you could go sit in the sauna. I suppose you could do that. You're also causing stress to your body. So you might actually continue to hold weight. Okay. The only time that that ever works, like sweating it out ever actually works as far as losing weight is like, if you're going to go to a weigh-in. Like, do you have a fight? Are you trying to cut? Are you trying to make weight? That's when that would be effective for losing water weight or losing weight in general. But um, for real life, um, we kind of got to weight it out a little bit. But there are some things that you can do. Number one is going to be drink more water. Water weight? Yeah, it helps to flush it out, right? We need to flush it out of our bodies, get our kidneys, our gut moving, especially if we have inflammatory things happening. We need to flush it out. Um, walking and exercise. So if you do have the kind of kind of water weight where you're holding where, you know, you like push into your shin, 
Um, I actually have that, I can, I can feel it right now where you push into your shin and there's a dent, right? That kind of water weight. Um, walking, drinking water, but also walking and just some general um, low level exercise is gonna help flush that out. The muscles contract and help squeeze the, the, the fluids back through your lymphatic system to circulate them and then get them flushed out of your body. Um, just like eating a bunch of fried food, heavily processed food can cause you to retain that extra water weight. If you avoid those foods and eat more whole foods, uh, foods that, you know, that look like how they grew or lived on the earth, uh, most closely, the fewer ingredients, the better. Feel free to salt those foods. Please salt those foods. Um, that is going to help you just eating lots of basically eating, giving your body the nutrients that it needs is going to help um, flush out that extra uh, food. And then just avoiding any inflammatory foods. So if I know that, okay, I really want to get this extra like five pounds of water weight off of me as quickly as possible, I'm definitely not going to be eating fried food. I'm definitely not going to be eating legumes because for me personally, legumes are an inflammatory food. So I'm going to avoid those. I am going to avoid dairy, okay? I had leather beads for my birthday last night. So <laughs> although my stomach is surprisingly okay today, um, I know I have some inflammation because it's dealing with this, this inflammatory food that I have. So today, in the next several days, I'm gonna be more careful than I normally am about eating those foods that I know are kind of triggering and inflammatory to my body. So as far as losing the waterways, we have kind of two avoids, avoid food that's gonna basically make it worse, drink lots of water and move your body. And the move your body, it does not need to be intensive exercise. It's just walk a little bit more than normal, make it a point to get up and move around. I'm doing this Facebook Live on my feet, okay? I'm moving around, I normally, I normally do it standing, um, but just to illustrate that point. Um, and just be kind to yourself and be patient. It'll pass, it's, if it's just water weight, it will pass. Um, and remember, you have to consume 3,500 excess calories. So over your maintenance calories, 3,500 calories over your maintenance calorie in order to gain a pound of fat. So unless you had like 8,000 calories on Thanksgiving, which would be really impressive if you could do that, um, you probably didn't actually gain fat from Thanksgiving. However, if you kind of fall into this slippery slope where you just kind of like, screw it, what the heck, I'm gonna eat whatever I want, that's when you actually start gaining fat. What, what starts off as just water weight, if you continue to eat excess calories, yes, you will gain, um, you will gain fat. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, please let me know. Uh, if you have any other questions, if, you have, if there was any confusion about, uh, other than those words that I just said, any confusion about um, anything that you want cleared up, um, ask away. Um, Kat, this is not speech time. Have a great night, everybody. Drink your water.